Okay. All right. Okay, so um, today, what you're looking at here on the board, um, we are having a silent auction for parking lot spaces. These are the parking lot spaces you can bid on. Uh, it's in the office. Okay, um, for these parking lot sp uh, spaces, if I go over here, this is the, where's my crew track? Um, this is the industrial tech area over here. This is the cafeteria and the gym. So you can kind of see these are like the 12 prime spots everyone wants to park in anyway. Um, we're, the auction's in the office. It's just for the end of the quarter, so it's pretty easy. You can bid, it could be as low as a dollar, you can go up from there, um, and that could be your spot for the next, you know, couple of weeks, three weeks, something like that. Um, you'll get one of these, so you can park there. If anyone's parking your spot, we're in home. So. Really? Yeah, so, that's your spot. So, where would they take it? It'll cost us more money to tow them than it will to buy the spot. So, they have to pay for it when they get it towed. Oh. So. All right. Oh, that's how it's going. Like so, don't park those spots. So, so uh, auction will, will start today. Um, actually, I had some people bid this morning. I didn't even advertise it yet, and people are already bidding. Um, so, um, they're going to be through bidding through Thursday afternoon, and then Friday will announce who the winners are, and then that's your parking spot for Monday. Wait, Makes can sense? you see the price? Like, can you see what the current yeah, price is? Yeah, the current price is on that little sheet of paper. Are they good? Are you, like, signed what? up? What are they signed one, of the, one of the bids, and I was, like, shocked because I didn't even advertise it. Just somebody wrote their bid on the paper this morning. It's 20 bucks for one of the spots. And I was like, Wait, do you but, pick which spot you get? Yeah, you get to pick. And oh, they have sheets of paper for each one. So you can bid on just maybe you want to bid on number nine only. That sheet of paper is a bit. Wait, I have a question. Um, where's the money? Can you put signs on the day? Money. Money. All money goes to that. 100% of the money goes to her. I'm only interested in the signs. Can you put signs up so I don't forget? Yeah, we're going to put signs. We have signs up around the school. Um, we have no, other things not, not for the voting. Like, see the parking lot. Spot. Spot. Yeah. These, these are going to be going up. Like, we're going to put a little advertisement outside on a stick. Like, this is a spot you can bid on. So we're going to do that. I think starting tonight after the blog game is over, I'm going to go out and bring out the drones out there put these up so you can see what spot you're bidding on. I have a question. The five by seven, eight, five, and six kind of park in the middle of all four. Definitely, yes. That would be your spot. I kind of like <laughs> That is your spot. Buy them all and just put like something random in each one. So, but tonight we're going to we'll put the advertisement out. These will be out there so you can kind of see what spot you're going to bid on. And then we'll give your name and that'll be your windshield. And then get okay. Um, just keep that in mind. It's going throughout the week. So if you go to your other couple classes today, ask the teachers very politely if you can talk them through that, that you want to advertise that we're trying to raise money for hurricane relief, so the more money the better. Uh, we're collecting no money for this, 100%. And then at the volleyball game tonight, we're doing a bake sale, and we're doing an airplane toss thing tonight, so bring some quarters, bring some dollars, uh, so you can buy some goodies and throw some airplanes around. How much money do people raise for this? Usually? No. 15 bucks. Uh, we are we much what time is it starting? Tonight? <coughs> or this? Oh, the sale. Bake sale? We're gonna be out there sitting at the tables before the game starts. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So, bake those Maybe you can start at like June, so we can get some sort of cross country meet. Oh, I was thinking we had practice. All right. Okay, but hey, try to advertise that. It's for a good cause. All the money goes to hurricane relief stuff. I'm gonna try to get it. It's like a lot of all four. what? No, 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 Okay. All right, today. Okay. All right, today. Um, we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be talking about chapter two here. It's actually te technically chapter one, um, but what we're gonna be doing here in this first section, section one one to one two, we're gonna be talking about how to graph uh, graph objects. So we're gonna be graphing. Um, this I know this is rare. But we're just gonna do today's just like a brief. Introduction review. Um, we're gonna get some more difficult stuff probably on on Wednesday. But today is just: Do we know the basic vocab terms? Do we know how to interpret things? Like for instance, one of the things we have to talk about is the Cartesian coordinate plane. Do we understand the little parts of it? 
Um, do you understand how to graph on it? Do we understand the different parts um, that we're going to be working on here? So coordinate, uh, coordinate point, right? And we're going to talk about the vocab uh, words with this. Um, because the vocab terms is a big thing. You wouldn't believe how many people still get this wrong. The vocabulary and how to graph dots and all that. Because there is parts that we will have to graph in this class. A lot of pre-calc and calc is graphing and seeing where how many answers are, intersection points. Um, so that's something we need to get better at. And today is just kind of introducing, you know, the graph itself, the different ways they can display graphs. So we call these the relations of graphs. Um, there's different forms of like data, so how you can display it. So relations are displaying data. Um, and then what I want to finish with today is basically do some examples of graphing different objects. So, you know, I'll give you an equation. Can we graph it? Um, if we can get through that, fine and dandy. One of the things that's going to be difficult in this section is, um, is what we're going to be getting into is called um, substitution. It's functional substitution. Um, so we're going to be substitution, uh, substituting um, functions and values in. So we're going to be basically evaluating objects. Uh, we're going to be evaluating uh, different functions. So that's what we're going to be talking about throughout this chapter. The goal throughout this chapter one is, do you know the basics on graphing? The basics, like what I mean by basics. Do you know how to graph linear functions? Do you know how to graph curves? Do we know the shortcuts for doing that? Because there are shortcuts. Do you know how to take a random function, like a uh, polynomial, and know what the graph roughly will look like? Like there's little tips and tricks that I can teach you for that. And like in you know a minute or two, you can get kind of a detailed graph of where you think it's going, and it, it'll be somewhat close without the need of a graphing calculator. Because that, that can definitely help you, knowing that where that thing's going. Um, so you can get kind of a, you know, a guesstimation of what the answer will be like. Okay, so that's what we're going to be talking about today. Today, as you remember, it's just a brief introduction. We'll probably be done early today. I just want to get just kind of a sense for where you guys are sitting. So this is obviously the coordinate plane. The Cartesian coordinate system moves in, you know, 16th century math topic. Um, uh, it's made by a French mathematician. Um, I mean, this this thing is definitely old. If you think about that, 16th century. Um, you know, it's before the United States was even a country. If you think about it, um, that we start using the system. It's used in every technology known to man. It's using your cell phones, your computers, because uh, it's using GPS systems for gold positioning satellites. You know, that type of thing. Um, it's just, it's just an easy system. Okay? It's using the x-axis. This is the x-axis. There are usually always labels when I give you graphs. Um, I always have them labeled for you. Then we have the y-axis. You're so um, Now, the origin is the center. Most people always get this wrong. The origin is just 0, 0. Um, it's just where the two main number lines cross. Because here's the weird thing that some people don't think about. The grid system is not actually there. Wow. All we're looking at is two number lines that are turned sideways, like on top of each other. And all they did was extend the little hash marks. Because this was the original number line. Just this. And the origin is the center of the number line. Usually we always call it zero. And then we're going up is positive, and then back is Thank negative. You, Jamie from Athletico is now ready for any juniors or seniors that need to see her. So it's just a number line, and then they turned the other one up on its end and went up and down, same thing, one, two, three, four, five, and they went down, one, two, three, four, so these are negatives, because it's just two number lines, and then you extend the hash marks to get all these, these uh, intersection points. You can get to anywhere on the graph. You don't always have to be on a perfect spot. Like, I don't have to always be here. I can be in the weird, unknown area in between them. Because the grid system isn't there. It's just you have to use the numbers. Now, the, the actual way that we get to every spot on here is called an ordered pair, if you guys remember that. Or a coordinate. Ordered pair. Or a coordinate. Why do they call them ordered pairs? Talk me through that. In a certain order. A certain order. order what? Pair. And it's pair numbers. But what order are they written in? X, Y. X, Y. It's alphabetical order, and it is a pair of numbers. So, um, so how we get you know to this spot here? This is five, six and a half. So five, six, six point five, and then we're up two point five. So six 
6.5 comma 2.5. That's this coordinate. Now, when we name when we name uh, points, capital letters, remember, um, that's just how you can get to anywhere on the graph. Some people always like get confused by that. Um, the easiest way I always explain it to people, other than it's alphabetical order, x first, y second, you have to pick an elevator, then you can go up and down in it. So you're walking to the hotel lobby, you have to pick your elevator, this is the main door. Uh, um, you have to pick your elevator, so we're in the 6.5 elevator, so, and then we're going up to second, or 2.5 floor, floor. So that's the idea. Okay, questions, comments about ordered pairs and graph dots? I wouldn't believe how many people still get that wrong. Um, and it's not that number. That number isn't the big deal. It's when I say graph negative 9 comma 0, people go all which way and they don't know where to go. You have to pick the elevator, then you go up and down in it. Well, I get in the negative 9 elevator, and I don't go anywhere. Can you go sideways? <laughs> That's broken. I went sideways, yeah. We're not going up and down. We'd rather push the button. We're just sitting there. Okay. Um, but remember, pick the elevator, then go up and down. Okay. All right. Um, questions, comments about the graph itself, the coordinate plane. Okay. Just so we know where all the dots are. All right. Quadrants. The quadrant system. Quadrants. Where's the first quadrant at? Top right. Top right. This is quadrant number one. Notice they use a Roman numeral. We use Roman numerals, not in a numerical form. In numerical form, like just numbers, digits, like one, we reserve numbers, digits for dots, points, coordinates. We use the Roman numerals for the actual quadrant. Quadrant is the entire space. Okay, this is the space where a bunch of dots are found. Now, if you're on a major axis, like X or Y axis, if one of your dots there, like this one, that is not in a quadrant. It's actually quadrantal. It's in between quadrants. So, but, but where's quadrant number two? The left, top left. Okay, you got the this left. quadrant number two, and the three, and four is going counterclockwise. Now we talked about this in geometry. Why they go counterclockwise? It's because when you draw angles, they go counterclockwise when you open up. Okay, because an angle. When I actually, when I actually draw an angle. You start with the horizontal line, that's called the initial side, you open up counterclockwise, and then you draw the terminal side. And that's why this is the first quadrant. That's the first quadrant you hit when you draw that angle. Um, that's, this is called standard position. Horizontal line, you open up counterclockwise. And that's why this would be the second, third, and fourth. Um, we had all the different types of angles and whatnot. Okay. Um, but again, when you're in between quadrants, like when you're on the axes itself, it's called the quadrantal. We have quadrantal angles, they land in between. We'll talk about that more later. Okay. Um, this is what you're looking at here. This is one type of relation for how you display data. Graphic. It's very visual. You can see where numbers are going and where they're flowing, where they're going to go next. Coordinates is a type of relation when you write it like this. Some people are very good. They can see the coordinates and they can get kind of a sense for where they're at. Some people need that visual. Because some people want to see the digits, the numbers, versus the actual physical look of it. Uh, but those are two types of relations. There's other types. One of the other types is called a table. A table is very specific. In fact, I'm going to show you an example of a table that you'd see on like a graphing calculator like one of these. The, T uh, the Texas Instruments. This is super expensive. Okay? Not that. Okay, here's a table. Let me make this a little bit smaller. This is a table that you would actually see on the screen of my calculator when I actually type it in. Okay, now what this is, it's actually giving you ordered pairs. You just don't know it. It's just written in a different way that you're not used to. Um, what a table is, it's giving you all your X numbers and it's giving you Y numbers. Now, this is the part that confuses people. What does this mean? Y1 and Y2. Can you think about that? What does that mean? <laughs> yeah, it's two different graphs happening at the same time. That's absolutely right. It's actually two different like uh, functions going on. The x number is the same for both. So this is one of the coordinates, negative three comma nine. Sorry, that's really hard to see, but negative three comma nine. That's one of the coordinates. That's for this first function, and the second function would be negative three comma five. You use the same x number, but it has a different y number. So this is like one graph versus the other graph. So maybe, you know, maybe you have two different things going on here, 
And so y1 is representing this one, and maybe y2 is representing this one. And you can kind of see where they're going to kind of meet. Is there any spot where they actually have the same number? Yes. At zero. Wait, which one? The y? The y numbers, yeah. Uh, Four. Yes, negative two. Negative two. They, so negative two and one. So they, they actually had an intersection point at two different spots. Now, how we know that? The y numbers are the same. You can see that. The y numbers are the same. So that means they intersected twice. So whatever was happening here, they crossed once and twice. So one comma one, and maybe maybe this went up a little bit further no. at you know two comma four, no, four. maybe two comma four. So maybe it was something like that. Okay, questions with the table. Now the weird thing is, there is a way to figure out the the functions, like to where this thing is going, by just having these numbers. There is a way to actually figure out the formula of what it is and what it represents, which is really, really odd that you can actually do that. Um, it just takes a little bit of skill to actually uh, figure it out, but there is a there is a process for doing that. Okay. Um, questions, comments about tables as a type of relation displaying data. Tables are usually really good in like science class when you're collecting a lot of data really fast, and then you want to put it on a graph later. It just makes it more organized. Again, the part that always confuses people, like when you look at the graph and calculator, it's because it displays two, or maybe even possibly three or four, if you have a bigger calculator. Um, I know, like, if you download the text instrument app on your iPad or phone or whatever you have, um, it'll display more than one, you know, more than one Y value if you have a bunch of functions going on. Um, how you can turn these off, you have to go to the, the main menu on your graph and calculator to actually turn off the functions so they won't show up in the, the tables. Okay, now, other than tables, there's an inverse. I don't want to talk about inverse today. Inverse is something very, very, very different. Okay. Um, but let's go to the graphs themselves. Okay, so this is one type of graph. It's a curve, obviously. Um, we're going to be looking at, like, this year, like this, actually, this chapter, we're going to look at, can we come up with a formula for this thing? Do we know roughly what it's supposed to be, where it's going, all that good stuff? The big thing I want you to know from this, like the vocabulary that's involved with the Cartesian coordinate system, this thing has an x-intercept, it has a y-intercept potentially, and it has um, inflection points, it has a minimum maximum type of thing. These are vocab words we're going to get throughout this chapter. So let's talk about the first one. It said x-intercept. Did it hit the x-axis uh, anywhere? Yes. Negative, one. negative one. That's the x-intercept. Okay. So it actually hit the x-axis at negative one if these are going by one. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? An x-intercept. Does it have a y-intercept? No. No. So how they write that in the book? It's non-applicable. Na does not exist. Okay. It's non-applicable. Um, they have um, uh, inflection points. It's when it changes direction. Well, is that negative one? Um, does this thing have a maximum or minimum to the graph? Yes. No. Well, it's unlimited. Yeah. This thing is going up, and this thing is going down. If I kind of follow the general direction, it does not have a maximum, and it does have a minimum because it keeps going, and the, the arrows are kind of pointing upwards, so you can keep following that thing along. So it's actually going in two different directions. So the maximum in this case, there is none, because the direction is actually heading for the maximum, it's heading towards positive infinity. Well, infinity is not a number, it's a direction. So this thing does not have a maximum. And it does not have a minimum. Okay. Questions, comments about this graph? Okay, I'm going to give you another one. Let's go with one more. Here's what I'd like you to do. In your notes, I would like you to draw this picture in your notes somewhere. I want you to tell me the x-intercepts y-intercepts, tell me if it has a max or minimum. Okay? I'm going to leave you with that. Give, give you two minutes to write that down. Wait, you want to, if you want to know where it turns around? No, no one blocked the points today. Y-intercepts, y-intercepts, max or min. No inflection points or anything like that. Oh, 
Intercepts. You can write it like that using the word and. Do not put a comma between them. If you put a comma between, it's a positive one, not a negative one. Oh, sorry. If you put a co if you put a comma between them, I count it wrong. That's a coordinate, and the and the x-intercept is not a negative two, negative one. Excuse me, down here. That is not an x-intercept. Okay. Um, so you got to put the word and. Now, if you want to write it like this, negative two, comma zero. And one comma zero, that's totally fine. You can write the actual coordinate there. Okay, but if you just write the numbers down, fine. We got to put the word and between them. Okay, now why intercept? Somebody else now, please. If it's going by ones. Two. Two. Positive two. Now, what's the coordinate for that? Zero. Zero. Okay. All right. We good with the y intercepts and x intercepts? No. Maximum minimum. None. None. Okay. Now, here's the thing I want to talk about. This is the new vocab word. If it said for a maximum, if it wanted an absolute maximum, that's none. Okay, that's none, does not exist, however you want to write it, NA. If it said absolute minimum, it's none. Okay, that means there's no max or min. Why, Tori? Because it goes to infinity. It goes towards infinity in both directions, positive and negative infinity. It's a direction that it goes, right? But here's the weird thing. Why I wrote the word absolute? There is a different type of maximum and minimum. Relative. It's called a relative. A relative max and a relative min. Okay, relative max and relative min is when it has a peak and valley somewhere in the middle of the graph, but it didn't, um, it wasn't the highest point. So like, for instance, this was a peak and a valley. It happened in the middle of the picture. It didn't really go, it didn't go, you know, it wasn't the highest point in the graph, it just kind of was in the middle, kind of dipped and went up and down. Those are called relative min and maxes. They had numbers on either side of them, because it was a peak and it was a valley. So it was kind of a dip, you know, the parts around it were higher or the parts around it were lower, respectively. Um, so these are called relative max and mins. What is that coordinate? Negative one, four. Negative one, four, that is a relative max. Negative one comma four, which the relative max would actually be just the number four, positive four, right? But it's the coordinate is negative one comma four. Where's the relative min? Zero. Not zero, but one zero. One zero. Okay. One zero um, would be the coordinate, but you're absolutely right. The relative min would be zero, right? If you just give me the number, number, right? But I want the coordinate. That's preferred. Okay. Questions with the relative max or min. Now, preferably, I like the coordinate for those when you go relative max and mins. Um, but if you just give me the zero, I will kind of write. I will kind of write. Or if you give me the four. You just have to make sure you understand the differences. When it has little peaks and valleys here and there, a problem can have a lot of different ones. Maybe it's going up and down a lot. It's oscillating up and down. You can have a lot of relative maxes that can be different heights and lots of mins, but it's not the absolute highest point and absolute lowest point. Okay, questions, comments with that? No. Okay, we'll do more examples of that relative idea tomorrow. Um, today was just kind of intro these. Okay, the last things I want to do today is, um, other than, you know, substituting and stuff, I want to talk about some examples of graphs. Because what I found for the most part is most people, they're fine with graphing, you can pick coordinates and stuff, but can you interpret a graph if you had to look at one? You have to look at a picture on like a max test and go, okay, what is this thing telling me? Is this, you know, what is this data representing? That's what most people struggle with. So I got a couple examples here, okay? And I don't need to say your answers out loud. Okay, kind of keep it to yourself. So it's kind of like a mini mock quiz for you. I want to see what you know. Okay, so here's the first one. You're going to pick one of these graphs. So one of these four is the correct one. 
Okay, an airplane flew from Miami to San Francisco. One of these graphs represents the flight. I want to know which one makes sense and why. Why are you supposed to say that loud? Can you stop? Stop. Okay. So it flew from Miami to San Francisco. Based on C straight down, based on C it crashed. So B was a logical answer. Grace, you wouldn't crash when you stop being down. No, it free fall. It totally lost all momentum. It just don't pace. It was instantaneous. It was instantaneous. It went from a dog's feet in the air to the air. It was in the just the gun. It happened. No, just the whole All right. <laughs> Gravity stopped working. Okay, so somebody, somebody, somebody yeah. wants to hear which one makes the most sense? B. B. Okay. Well, how did the plane land? <laughs> it it landed safe, but like a normal, not a carrier jet. It's not a safe land. Okay, now when you're looking at these, obviously you've got to look at the X intercept, the seconds after takeoff. So hopefully you, you don't have a hovercraft. You know, we're not going from ground all instantly up in the air like a just say, UFO. Hopefully we don't have a hovercraft. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that would be so cool. All right, uh, but then we have to think about when we're going. We have to come back down safely, not crashing, and we're not you know staying hovering in the air for some reason or just stopping somewhere in the air. Um, we're coming back down to the ground and height. Okay, so that one is the only one that makes sense. Now some of these later ones get tricky. That one's easy. Okay, at noon you begin to breathe in. <laughs> so time at afternoon and the volume of lung, uh, volume of air in your lungs. So, so you're going to breathe in right after noon, right at twelve o'clock. You're going to breathe in. So, you don't You lose volume when you breathe out. I didn't say no. You don't breathe out. You just breathe in. Breathe in. Just breathe, breathe out. in. Breathe I didn't say breathe out. Breathe out. That's how doing. <laughs> See? It's so, a play of words, right? Yeah. So which one is it? Yeah, yeah. See, you have to breathe in very slowly. Okay? You're not exhaling. We didn't say that. We said we're breathing in. So it's a play of words. That that okay. one gets people. Okay. We're like, no. Oh, you know, it's gonna be A, you're gonna breathe in, breathe out, breathe in. You're just breathing in. I say C because I'm just gonna die away. Alright. Now, let's go to the next one. Uh where's my first rep? I lost it. Alright, here we go. Okay, uh, measurements taking a person's height from birth to the age 100 if they live that long. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I took a picture of the book. And the book is like, see? No, uh, you don't have to shrink. You don't have to grow. You don't have to. You, do you, do you can. You will eventually shrink. <laughs> what gravity compresses the spine. Well, let me go to outer space to grow the engines. Okay. So, which one are we saying? A. C. 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 You don't have to drink. No, it's a C. A. C. A. You will drink. You will. Not necessarily. Your spine compresses you. Yeah, but if you have one of those chairs that you can lay upside down. All right, all right. We're going to be normal. A is a breath. Or you go to space. All right, now. Take your spine because I know that. You won't. You won't because she doesn't have one of them. All right, she's the only weird one. She's on a different graph. Okay, but if you were to become an astronaut, she you'd can't be taller. Go all right, all right. I can't. They can't reject me already. All right, so, all right, begin your bike ride riding down a hill. You ride up another hill. Finally, you're right along the surface before coming to a stop. So, take this one in. This is one that was kind of near the end in the book, so I was like, all right, got to pick a difficult one. So, you're riding your bike downhill. Then you're going to ride up another hill, finally coming to a level surface area before coming to a stop. So you have time and you have speed. Okay. Okay, which one are we saying? B. It's B. You came to stop, your speed was on nothing. You you go down a hill, your speed's going faster, though. I don't yeah, and see. speed axis is going. What are you holding your brake so going down? Down. <laughs> Boom. Your speed is going down a hill. All right. As you go downhill, you will speed up. So we have to pick one that is getting faster. So it's got to be, it's gotta be either this one, C, or B. Now, at some point, we have to go back up the other hill. So when you get, to, when you get past that and you have to come to the other hill, you'll probably tend to slow down. Okay, so now you're slowing down, and then you have to come to a level spot, so you'll be constant, and then you have to come to a stop safely. It's got to be letter B. This one, 
your your increasing speed the whole time. Unless your lanes are strong and you're increasing that speed going up the hill, that's not going to happen. Uh, you're going to probably slow down at some point and you can come to a stop. So Lance Armstrong, he can be his own little category right here. But this is probably the one we're looking at. The one that's most deceiving is that most people, when they look at this graph, they try to think of like the bike is going downhill. So they're like this. Oh, you're going downhill, then you're coming back up the hill and you're leveling. No. Because you have to look at the labels. This was time, and this is your speed, not, not altitude. If it was altitude, sure. Yeah, but you're Okay, you got some time here. So don't, just relax, you got some time. Tomorrow, you definitely need your textbook. We're going to look at not just examples of graphing, but we're going to look at examples of doing substitutions and all that good stuff. There's a couple different ways of substituting for graphing. We're going to look at that. I'm going to hand out some graph paper tomorrow. Um, my goal tomorrow is when you first get here is to look at your test, because I think hopefully everyone will be done by that. Um, we can look at your test scores, you can see your scores tonight when I come in. And then, um, to look at it, and then um, after that we'll come back with this idea and we'll look at graphs. Okay? Alright, the rest of the time is yours. Yes, Wait, the scores aren't in yet? Hey. check. I have a test. Hold on to later, I got a couple people that have to finish today. Is there a number nine?